because it doesn't work well because it's got so many back doors in it. It's sending data back the entire time to Microsoft, back to Google. I mean, Google admits they got caught. I told you they were doing this years ago. I told you they were set up by the NSA and CIA in 1998. That's all come out mainstream news. We had a CIA retired agent on who got so many threats over it, he's refused to ever come back on, David Steele. In fact, I want to get David Steele back on. He said maybe later. Hadn't been on in like five years. I want him back on. And Dr. Stallman said he would come back on when he got back from Europe and, and China trip, uh, one of the inventors of open source. Uh, he doesn't like to call it Linux. He calls it something else when you use that term. I'm not really a tech guy. The point is, yeah, GNU. The point is, is that this is a takeover. Okay, so I, and the media always acts like I'm anti-science. No, it's the opposite. I love technology. I love aircraft. I love cars. I love tech. I love smartphones. I love it. I have, but I don't like the fact that it's all designed to track and control me and back doors are built into it that I'm paying for. You're paying for the technology that's put in there, mandated by the different Telecommunications Act. And by the way, we're under a global government already to a great extent. This is standardized worldwide. You know, you've finally seen a big hubbub made about the Chinese tech built with all these back doors. Guys, you put that on screen, people won't believe it. That almost all the microchips made in China have back doors built in it. And uh, all these Republican senators have gotten upset on an investigation because there's spy tech in the in the B-2 bombers and there's spy tech in the new, you know, F-18s and there's spy tech in the new helicopters and, and kill switches. And the Chinese came out and said, these are specifications you requested. I'm not defending the, the communist Chinese leadership. The point is, is that that's global. It's not just the Chinese that are building tech with kill switches and back doors. It's all got it. It's all got it because the globalists want it in there. Yeah, there it is. Uh, DefenseTech.org. Proof that military chips from China are infected. Security backdoor found in China made U.S. military chip. Information age. Backdoor in uh, made in China computer chips threatens U.S. military. Taipei Times. Backdoor found in Chinese made U.S. chips. Slash dot. Infowars. Security backdoor found in Chinese made U.S. chips. Alex Jones. On and on and on and on and on and on. Now. Like, where is my stupid tracker phone? This little piece of technology where I can check the weather when I'm out on the road, where I can keep in touch with my family, where I can shoot videos and upload them on the road of what's going on. It's a great double-edged sword, just like Facebook. Hey, we know it's an enemy platform. We use it because that's where the battle is. If you won't engage in the battle space, you're going to lose very quickly. But you better be aware of the battle space. And all of you out there that are in PSYOP who think you're so cool, you're a victim of your own PSYOP. This system, in their own words, plans on killing you and your family once this is in place. So th that is so foolish to think that you're on a winning team just because you know all of this. What, does it make it okay that you know that there's a global government forming and sending its electronic tentacles into everything to track and control society and turn off resources and then start systematic soft kill operations. They're going to accelerate those. I mean, if you think that's cute and funny, if you think it's, I mean, look right here, keep showing this every day the last couple months. Harvard study confirms Florida reduces children's IQ, Fox News, food concern, a consumer, you name it, reduces IQ massively, 10 to 20 points, depending on what variant uh, of type of fluoride and how much depending on the city, and causes massive cancer increases and all sorts of other nasty things. They do this in the 20s. Again, did you get a memo, PSYOP officers in corporations and in the Marines and in the Army and in the Department of Defense and at DARPA, did you get a memo not to drink this? The answer is, no, you didn't get a memo, you idiots. What, you think you're going to sell out to a technocracy that's killing people and letting the troops use DU, that's a death sentence? But 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 you're gonna play along in the system and get your pension and go play golf. You're idiots. You're morons. You cannot make a deal with an evil of this magnitude. And it just goes on to say doctors want everybody to uh, have all all pills 
over the counter, you name it, need to have chips so, so they can monitor you and track you because of drug abuse. Yeah, they push all their toxic drugs on people, get them addicted, and now say everybody's got to eat microchips. They've already found most Americans that are having autopsies done already have nanotech in their brain. Oh, you think that's an accident? They've already got vaccines introduced and tests on troops that are coming back like zombies that wipe out emotion. Your free will destroyed, basically lobotomized. They call it the anti-stress vaccine. The point of this technology is not to say you're being a bad patient. The point is to have accurate data. So, and that's the double speak. It, it is saying we're going to track you as a patient. Co-founder of the company, Chief Medical Officer George Savage said, the swallower sensor is linked to a skin patch worn in a patient's torso, which captured the report sent by the sensor about the size of a grain of salt. The sensor has no battery or antenna and is activated when it gets wet from stomach juices. The, that completes a circuit between coatings of copper and magnesium on the other side, generating a tiny electrical voltage for a few minutes. This is just the first gen of all this. And it goes through basically making the patients all take these and where all that's going. Let me add, too, this is all quack stuff. Just like they've proven the, um, the uh, lie detectors are a fraud. They now have these brain scans at airports saying, you know, you're a killer or you're this or that. That's all a fraud. A scientist successfully hacked brain to obtain private data. It sounds like something out of a Johnny mnemonic, but scientists have successfully been able to hack a brain with a device that's easily available on the open market. Researchers from the University of California, University of Oxford in Geneva figured out a way to pluck sensitive information from a person's head, such as PIN numbers and bank information. And it goes over it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's just stop right there. Let me tell you how to hack the brain. The Pentagon actually has documents called Hacking the Brain. The brain has no firewalls from the 80s. Look it up. Full spectrum dominance, the brain and beyond. Just look it up. Your, your eyes are brain tissue. They grew out of your brain in the embryonic development. It hacks the brain when you look at something. Your brain is now accessing that information. You show a man, an, an attractive naked woman, it hacks the brain. You show somebody images of a uh, ice water when they're in the desert, it hacks the brain. So understand, ladies and gentlemen, the brain doesn't have firewalls. It's wide open. When you're on an unconscious mode and just accept everything you're being told in a jellyfish mode, suspended disbelief, you are wide open to anything and everything. Now, coming up when we get uh, Doug Hagman, private investigator, advisor to police, military, uh, you name it, when we get Hagman on, his source, NDHS, is saying Obama is, quote, going hot with a false flag. And then we got Steve Quell joining us to expand on that. We'll also intersperse a lot of other news. But let me just, uh, let me just put this out for you right now. <clears throat> there have been four different Democratic Party fundraising memos that went out saying, don't worry, even if... The Republican nominee ends up <coughs> beating Obama in polls. There's just going to be a staged event. There's going to be a new Oklahoma City or 9-11. We're going to blame it on the Tea Party. <coughs> also, Robert Shapiro, the famous lawyer, Clinton and Obama advisor, wrote that in the Financial Times of London. He said, without an Oklahoma City or 9-11, Obama's gone. Yeah, I mean, they say they're neck and neck, Obama and Romney. And sure, it doesn't matter at one level, but the system, the crime syndicate behind Obama wants to stay in power, okay? And when they openly say, without a terror attack, we're done, you have to look at that and say, wow, they may do this. And they've been setting the stage now to shift from Al-Qaeda to domestic groups in the media since I've been reporting this the last three years and since Glenn Beck a year and a half ago right before he left Fox News, warned people that they were preparing to blame him. Well, if you actually read Media Matters, it's, it's me and Beck and anybody else they don't like. And even though Beck is somewhat controlled opposition from the right-wing quarter, because the globalists have to have a right wing to control, still the, the, the real heart of the global system is what they call liberal. It's not liberal, uh, liberal at all, but that's the core of the ideology is what we know of as establishment liberals. So they see people from Glenn Beck Michael Savage, and then going out more towards real media, you know, Matt Drudge, 
Alex Jones. They see us as in one camp and are going after us. So I want to play this clip here of Glenn Beck a year and a half ago uh, talking about how they're talking about staging events. Here it is. Why does the left need this violence? Well, listen to a clip from a Democratic pollster, Mark Penn, happened just the other day, and yet no one pays attention to it. How can the left win the country? Watch. Cabinets don't, don't really sell things. The president himself has to reconnect with the people. Remember, President Clinton reconnected through Oklahoma, yeah. right? And the president right because now, the he seems removed. And it wasn't until that speech that he re clicked with the American public. Obama needs a similar, a similar kind of event. You think words work for... Obama needs a similar kind of event. Oh, not like Oklahoma City. If only Barack Obama could have the opportunity to speak to America after another Oklahoma City type event, then he'll politically be in good shape. Wow. Now, according to Drummond Pike, the founder of Tides, who, Drummond, I hope you watch this week because, oh, it's all coming undone this week. I will be the guy who causes the next Oklahoma City. This is in a letter, an appeal to advertisers uh, of Fox, dear Fox advertisers, read this part of it. No one, left, right, center, wants to see another Oklahoma City. The next assassin may succeed. If so, there will be blood on many hands. They are setting up another Oklahoma City. They are claiming that one is coming, and they've already marked the one who caused it. But don't you miss Wednesday's show? All right. I show you violence and the pressure. Again, the reason I show you this is I've pioneered exposing the false flag for 17 years. That's why I got into media was I knew Oklahoma City was a staged event. Because I saw the newscast that were aired here locally. People got the tapes from Oklahoma. I watched them on Access Television. That was the last straw. The, the, the point is it's good news that now Larry Pratt's come out and said Obama could be staging these shootings. Because he staged Fast and Furious. People wouldn't even be able to recognize Fast and Furious as a false flag if we hadn't done this and if you hadn't got the word out. Now Michael Savage talks like this, Glenn Beck does, Rush Limbaugh does. This is what will stop false flag is recognizing it exists. The devil's greatest trick was convincing the world he didn't exist. A private investigator, advisor to state police, the feds, you name it. And I found he's got some pretty good information. Doug Hagman, he's got a Homeland Security source that dovetails with all the police officers you've heard call in and say, all Hades, they've been told, is going to break loose in late October, early November. October surprise. Is that the Iran war? Staged terror attacks where Homeland Security claims the Tea Party's working with Iran? They are now saying that in Army reports. Our Iran and Al-Qaeda. And you're like, that's ridiculous. Well, that's because you're a Tea Party person and you know how Islamophobic they are. I mean, you can use that term. I mean, the average Tea Party person thinks Muslims are hiding under the table. That new 2016 movie that's out basically says Obama is a secret Muslim who's anti-colonial is selling us out to him. Homeland Security says, I mean, this is scrambled PSYOP that that group is working with the Muslims. Hey, let me tell you, they blow up a city and say it, the general public will get in line. Some Tea Party people will denounce their neighbor who's Tea Party and say, they must be Al-Qaeda too.